hello this is Ellen from the Make Room and this is the final video in how to make a Roman blind and um, today I'm going to show you how to cover the button um, you will either have a button um, that you fix up on the wall with a cleat that you wind the cords around or you can buy a, um, a pre-made cassette head rail is a purchased head rail with all the cords in it with a bead chain at the side um, but I'm going to show you how to do the batten method because this is all already done for you. So first of all you need a batten this one is uh, three centimeters uh, by two centimeters deep three centimeters wide by and it, it can be ceiling fixed like that or it can be face fixed. Ceiling fixed sometimes um, you would do in a recess especially if you don't want it to be too close to the door window furniture like handles and things you want to set it a bit further apart a bit further away rather um, and face fixed is um, if there isn't that problem and you just want it as close to the window as possible so um, it's a good idea to pre-drill two holes that you're going to use to fix it up because it's quite difficult to do that once you've covered this with fabric and you want the holes to be either in the middle or just slightly higher than that because we're going to have a piece of velcro on here and if it's not interfering with the velcro then that's useful the velcro is actually an inch wide so this is the actual length of my finished blind 70 centimeters um, normally I would cover it in the fabric that the blind is made out of and you normally have a, a strip down the side that you can use for that to wastage but in this particular instance I don't so I'm just going to use curtain lining to cover it you don't actually see it from the um, other side, from the road side of the window anyway, uh, but it's just nice if you can cover it in the same fabric. But anyway, I'm just gonna use curtain lining. So the thing to do is to put your button onto your fabric and then to work out how much that you need, you need enough to cover over the end uh, by a couple of centimeters and the same the other side, and then to cover the actual uh, button. You need to roll it over to cover one side, roll it over again, roll it over again and then you need to allow about two centimetres extra to that. So I've just, so I've placed my button on my fabric a little bit in from the edge so that I can cover that corner. I've made sure that it's covering the whole button. I've turned it, turned it and now I'm going to cut it a couple of centimetres proud of that line so I've got a bit to turn under so I'll unroll that and then just make sure I've got a, an equal amount either end to fold over the other things that you're going to need is a staple gun you can use a hammer and tacks if you don't have that you're going to need some screw eyes that are going to uh, carry the cords across the top here. It's best to use brass ones because they don't tarnish, solid brass. Um, you're going to need cord, cord your blind, which is a very fine, it's just blind cord if you want to order that. And you will need a cleat that's going to go on the wall and some screws and just an end that is going to go on the end of the cords. And the final thing is the Velcro, which is going to go onto the batten at the top. And this is the adhesive uh, Velcro. I just realised I've got the wrong size. Let me just get the right one. Because the adhesive side has to be the rough side of the Velcro, because we've got the soft side on the blind. Okay, so the first thing to do is just to make sure that you've just got enough to turn over and cover that button and if you have just position it and then just first of all fold in the ends and just staple those and then pull the other one a little bit taut as you do it so it will look like that so it's a longer piece here this is just enough to cover that button and the longer piece is going to fold right over and then I just if this is the fabric that you're doing your glider it might be a lot thicker so it's a good idea just to cut those corners off so it just gets rid of the bulk so I'll just cut off these corners here of fabric and 
then you just want to put your finger on the top there and fold it over so that it makes like a little envelope fold and you're just going to staple that again into the corner. So it looks like that. And then again we're going to cut these corners off just to uh, take away some of the bulk. Not really necessary with the lining but I'm just doing it to show you especially if you had quite a heavy fabric. So I just cut those corners away and then I'm just going to tuck again put my finger on the, the button and fold it over and this time I'm going to do a fold of the fabric along here so that when it comes up to the top it's got no raw edge it's a folded edge so I'm just going to do the other end make a little fold make sure that that doesn't sit too far over your button and then just do one end, pull it taut as you go, the other end, and then one in the middle, just pull it a bit taut, tuck those sides in, and then I'm just going to put some more staples just on that folded edge, and on the top there, make sure it's nice and taut. This side with the staples in will be the side that you put against the wall. So you're not going to see this side. So it looks like that. And it's nicely folded in. And the right side is the side that there's no, uh, can't see any of the turnings. Good idea now to make a hole where, you're, where you're, you've drilled your hole. So you need a braddle. Run your bradle along and you will find where the hole is and just make a hole right the way through and on the other end, just so that I know where that is. So I now have got two holes in my fabric, just so that I can see where to screw, put the screws up. The next thing to do is to get your Velcro and you're going to put it on Whichever is the uh, top edge, there's the fold on the other side right? and I'm going to do make sure that I put it on that top edge so that that top part is the flush side. So I'm just going to peel this back and stick it to the very top of the button like this, all the way along. But we do need to staple it as well. This isn't enough to keep it... Uh, in place but it helps you while you are stapling it so it's much easier to use the sticky one you can just use the normal because it, you just have to be careful while you're stapling it doesn't move about and now you need to go along the whole piece of velcro at intervals of about about eight centimeters or so just to make sure that doesn't ever come off make sure my holes are still visible they're just the velcro is just covering them a bit there we go I have the velcro on the top there okay so now we need the blind to work out where to put the screw eyes so I have my blind here that uh, is finished now with all the rods and the bars in and um, I've also strung it now the way to string it is to lay your cord on your um, Roman blind starting at the bottom rod lay it up across the top and down the side about two-thirds where the uh, hole's going to be cut it off and then uh, tie that into your lower ring uh, and thread it up through your rings and do the same for each one until you have each of your three cords or however many cords you've got ready to go. So my cords are all here and when they go across the top and down the side they're all roughly the same length. But allow plenty of extra so you can cut off what you don't need. Now nowadays we have quite strict rules about uh, Roman blinds because of safety issues. Now I'm this blind isn't, for, this is actually for my workshop, so it's not going to be around any children at all. So I'm 
tying my uh, cords onto my lower ring but if you don't if you have if you can use this in your house and uh, there's any risk at all you need to use these breakaway orbs you will get them given to you if you buy a cassette head rail if not you can order them and you can sew these on to the very final um, where your lower ring is and it can just go there and instead of tying that piece of cord it's just a spring mechanism you press it you put the cord through and you just let go and it holds it but if for any reason there was a tug on those they would pull out so there's no risk uh, of strangulation if a child gets the cords caught around their neck because they will just pull out so uh, do be aware of that it is a legal requirement now if you're making blinds for anybody else that you put the breakaway orbs on and that you do not tie them on um, so and they're very cheap they're like I don't know 5p or something and they're transparent so you don't really uh, show or anything and there's a whole packet of them there so I've got my cords in so I can see and I've got there's my rings on each of my uh, pockets where the, the rods are. I'm going to actually put the button on to the top of my blind. So there's the velcro and there's the velcro at the top of the blind. I'm just going to literally stick it on like that. Okay so it's held onto the blind and now I can see where to put my uh, screw eyes. The, the blind is going to be strung to the right so as this is the right side it's going to go across here and down there. So have your bridle handy. Um, you could use a tape measure you know you can see where your ring is positioned is five centimeters from the edge. So your first one you can put at five centimeters and use a bridle to make a hole to start with into your wood at this underside and then you're going to screw the screw eye in. Just get it going and then you can use your bridle to put it in all the way down. You don't you want to screw them right in because you don't want them hanging down too far. So as far as they go and then they need to be that way so that the cord's going to go through it. And then there's I can Put one at the end there, uh, five centimetres from the edge. And the hole I'm putting right in the middle of the, of the uh, base of the button. Just get the middle one ready as well. So I know the middle one should be at the halfway point, which would be 35. So I'm just going to hold there. And we always have one extra one just where the cords are going to feed down to the cleat on the wall. So I'm going to put one right on the end here because this is strong to the right. So just get these round in. all of the rings ready to feed the cords through. So now I'm going to actually feed the cords through because it's always a good idea to just string your blind completely and check that it's all working correctly before you offer it up to the window. Make sure you haven't got any problems you need to address. So the first cord goes through all of them, the second cord feeds up to the second one in and then through the others and the final cord just goes through the two at the top here. So 
you can see I've got all my cords in and if I pull I should find that it pleats up I've just got a bit caught there behind I just pull it out get the pleats going you need to get the pleats to kind of set in really so it's good to sort of get it folded up and then give it a really good kind of press with your hands to make sure as you can see it's all pleated up and then from the right side you shouldn't see it should all cascade down really nicely and you shouldn't see that final pleat because that's the half the half the pleat that goes up hidden I've got little beads on mine so you might just be able to see those hanging down but not the actual feet and you can see that's looking really nice and as I let go it's going to just drop down really nicely and you can see already where I've pressed those with my hands the pleats are starting to form you don't really want to press them with an iron because you need to get the blind up at the window to see where the pleats are going to fall uh, when it's actually hung and then just do it with your hands like kind of like this just get a nice pleat going like that and then if you leave them up in that position for a day or two you'll find that uh, they kind of stay in their folds I'm just going to give it a bit of a press there and you can see but you can see the pleats forming already and then it folds up a lot easier as you can see because they're all in there so the, the thing to do now is to uh, if you were going to fix it now onto the wall you would have to unstring this um, take the, the button off take the strings out so obviously you can't put the end on until you've put this on the wall so you're going to fix that up on your window with your two screws then you're going to put your blind up and then you're going to string it and then the final thing to do is to put the end on the cords most of the ends will have a large hole that you can get at least three or four cords through you can get things called cord connectors where you put all the cords into one uh, little thing at the top and then you can just leave one cord that goes into the uh, end I prefer not to do that because sometimes they can uh, come undone and then you've got little short cords which is a bit annoying so I always just put all the cords down to um, an end you can get wooden ones as well and you can make the hole a bit bigger if it on the wooden ones if it's too small just wiggle, wiggle your bedle in there and then you just take them through to the bottom make a knot cut you know a double knot cut it and the, the, the knot hides inside the end and then the cleat goes on the wall in a position normally about halfway down or two thirds of the way down the window or if you don't want somebody to be able to reach it obviously much higher up uh, it just goes on the screws you can just use your bradle again to mark the position where you want it just put your bradle through the eyes of the cleat to mark where you want it and that's it so um I hope you've enjoyed these videos and uh, do check out further ones, maybe next ones will be uh, curtains or something like that. Thank you very much.